Let's say the work solutions. So which indicator would be most appropriate for titrating ethylamine and nitric acid? So ethylamine, this is a weak base. So weak base and strong acid. So weak base, strong acid will give us an equivalence point of less than 7. So it's going to be in the range of 4 to 6. So we need one indicator that is going to give us an endpoint that has a pKa value in that region. So remember, our range is going to be pKa plus minus 1. So the only one that fits in that range is bromothermal blue. So the range is going to be 3 to 5, so that fits in the range that we're looking for. Now, second question, what is the effect on this acid base indicator when sodium hydroxide is added? So when sodium hydroxide is added, so concentration of OH- minus is going to increase. So the equilibrium is going to shift to decrease the amount of OH-. minus. So the equilibrium will want to remove the OH- minus by reacting it with H+. Plus. So when H plus is being used up, so the concentration of H plus is going to decrease. So what will happen? The equilibrium is going to shift to the right to replenish the H plus. So the equilibrium is going to shift to the right and we'll see more of color B. The third question, Describe how an indicator works. So this is for free mark. So you have to give three elements of answer. It's always good to write the equation, the equilibrium for the indicator. So here you have the combined form of the indicator producing the uncombined form of it. So here you have color A and you have color B. Now you have to say that HIN, the combined form of the indicator, is a weak acid. Now, in an alkaline solution, the amount of H plus is going to decrease because H plus is going to react with OH minus. Therefore, the equilibrium is going to shift to replenish the H plus. So, equilibrium is going to shift to the right. So, we'll see the color B. And when it is in an acidic solution, we're going to have a lot of H+. Plus, so the equilibrium will shift to the left to decrease the amount of H+. Plus. So equilibrium will move to the left and we'll see color B. Sorry, color A. Next question. You need to find the appropriate indicator for ethanoic acid and potassium hydroxide. Now, ethanoic acid, this is a weak acid. Potassium hydroxide, this is a strong base. So, weak acid, strong base, the equivalence point is going to lie at pH greater than 7. So, we need to use table 22 to find the indicator that has a pH range around this or a pK value that agrees with this range. So, if you look at this table, you find that in the range of 8 to 10, you have phenolphthalein. So, phenolphthalein with pKa 9.6 can be used as an indicator here. So, you give the indicator and the reasoning. Number four, so the pK value is given in the data booklet. State the equation for the reaction of propanoic acid with water. Propanoic acid, so it has three carbons. So this is propanoic acid reacting with water. Reversible arrow because it's a weak acid. plus H3O plus, so that's the equation. And calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of an aqueous solution of 0 0.1 molar propanoic acid. So you have the pKa value from the data booklet. 
from the pk value you can get the ka value from the ka value you can get the h plus value because remember that you can use this equation here so h plus can be found by multiplying the two values and having the square root the question could also ask you to find the ph value now the graph shows the computer simulation of 25 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid so this is from the flask and then sodium hydroxide which is from the burette and the ph range of phenol red indicator so this is a strong acid strong base titration and you have the indicator range for phenol red sketch the graph that would be obtained for the titration of propanoic acid with potassium hydroxide with bromothymol blue as indicator so because you are given the concentration and the volume so you will have to be accurate with the starting ph the ph at half equivalence point and uh you can be approximate with the ph at equivalence point but you will also need the ph at the end of the reaction so the initial ph is the ph of the propanoic acid so we have already found the h plus concentration of the propanoic acid now from the h plus concentration we can get the ph value the initial ph value so we can start the graph so initial ph is 2.9 we can start the graph around here so that will be the starting point now at half equivalence point pH is going to be equal to the pKa. So the pKa is given in the periodic table uh, in the data booklet. So at half equivalence point, pH is going to be 4.87. So we could say 4.9 to be able to plot that. Now we're using 25 centimeter cube of a monoprotic acid with the same concentration of the base so they would require the same volume at equivalence point so 25 centimeter cube would be the would be the equivalence point so 25 centimeter cube and so half equivalence point is going to be half of 25 so 12.5 so half of this it should be at 4.9 so around 5 because it is a weak acid strong base so the ph at equivalence is going to be around 8 to 11 so let's say 9 around 9 so let's say this is our equivalence the ph at equivalence so we have here and here and from these data we can sketch the graph so it start here rises gradually and then it's going to have a sharp rise at the equivalence point and it will reach the ph of sodium hydroxide of 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide sorry so the final poh is one so the final ph is going to be 13 so after that it's going to flatten to 13. Now, if we look at the pH range of bromothymol blue, so 6 to 7.6, so the, this is the range of pH for bromothymol blue, so 6 to 7.6. Let's look at the next question. Acid base titration is used to find the concentration of an acid or a base. Explain why titrating a weak acid, weak base will not give reliable result. So there is no sharp 
change in pH as equivalence point is weak for weak acid, weak base. We never have to titrate this. And explain why titrating it is not necessary because the unknown solution is always going to be titrated against a solution of known concentration. So if you have a weak acid that needs to be titrated, you will use a strong base of known concentration. If you have a weak base that is being titrated, you will use a strong acid. So it never happens that you need to titrate weak acid, weak base. Number five, Sorry, number seven, explain the difference between equivalence point and end point. So equivalence point is where stoichiometrically you have equal amounts of acids and bases. You have equimolar H plus and OH minus ions. But end point is when the acid base indicator is going to change color.